Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. We're very happy to have Jim Dix here with Utah's Reptile Rescue. And look what I've got. This is not the same one that was found in the pool in Florida. No, that one was much, much bigger. But nonetheless, he was found here in Utah, and Jim had to go and collect him. Jim, it's great to have you here on the show. It's good to see you again, Joe. Yeah, it's been a long time, and uh, we're thrilled to have you back. I, I'm excited about this because uh, I've got a gator in my hands which not too many people can say they've done. I know, but this gator should not be in the state of Utah, That's right? That's right. This is, this is an right. illegal. It is illegal. How did he get, can you give me a little story about how you ended up with it? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, well, we pulled 41 alligators out of Utah in the last three years. 41? Yeah, ranging from one to six foot. Um, that's in houses, drug houses, illegally owned, um, at large, um, Caseville Botanical Gardens, the Jordan River, um, Alfalfa Farms in Beaver, Utah, uh, right down to the Del Taco Dumpster, and Tooele had a four footer. Really? In Lake Point there, yeah. Tooele so had a four the footer? Right. Wow. And, and so um, it's been a growing problem over the years, and I don't know why so many people are fascinated on bringing them in, but all alligators, caimans, and crocodilians are illegal in Utah. So they are bringing them in. A lot of them are used to conceal drugs. They put the animal in a cage in the sand and gravel with the drugs underneath the sand and gravel. Because nobody's going to touch that. No right. They fear they're going to get bit. Or they do it with venomous snakes. We're seeing um, exotic venomous now like cobras, gaboon vipers, soft-scaled vipers. And the scary part about that is there's no anti-venine for African species. If you get bit, you can die you're, in like 45 minutes. Yeah, you're probably going to die. Is what yeah, it's saying. four hours away, and it's 100 grand starting just four the anti-venine and they would have to ship it up out of Dade County, Florida on a private jet, which would cost you probably another 200 grand to have that sent out. But like they say, what's the price of your life? Yeah, but the likelihood of you making it is not particularly high. And you mentioned this, we were talking off camera, I was interested in the black mamba. Are you familiar with the snake? <laughs> I'm familiar with the black mamba. It's pretty scary because it can climb. And that's one of the things that I think makes it even worse. You can't get up and away from it. And they're very deadly. And in fact, the venom, uh, or the anti-venom, is almost as deadly as the venom itself. Yeah, but you have to have it, but once again, right. um, they it's don't have, yeah, in Utah it's not. And uh, all snakes are um, excellent swimmers, in case you don't know, and they're all excellent at climbing trees or up on they beds. They all or, can climb yeah. trees? Yeah, so what do you have in your hand right now? This is a Gila monster, and this is a venomous lizard. He's so um, cool. It can't kill you. What they have is a venom gland on the side here. And uh, they actually, in the wild, they would bite you if you grabbed them. The only way you're going to get bit is if you caught one in the wild. They're illegal to own and possess or harass. And uh, they bite and lock on you, and then they chew, thrash your body around, and that excretes that venom out of the gland into the saliva. Into the wound? Yeah, into the oh. wound. You won't die from it. But it's a very painful bite. It's like putting your hand in the fire, what people say, and burning the flesh off. Uh -huh. And the, even morphine won't stop the pain. So wow. that gives all you right. an idea. So all of these illegal animals, they're brought in first as pets, and then two, you see it mostly with drugs, and they're using them to, hi to hide right. drugs. Are they, um, you know, they just, uh, some people um, are fascinated by owning a venomous reptile. It's kind of like they can, you know, feel like they're in control of life or death because uh, if it's a certain thing it can kill you like a cobra real oh. quick um, you know these are people adrenaline junkies and stuff like that right so. huh yeah that's so that that drug community tends to have a few the more of these <laughs> the drug yeah. community loves it what do you I think you want to get a little closer sure yeah you know, okay now you got to take him from the back first yeah <laughs> hold him tight yeah, on this start tail. with the tail because the tail is strong Yes. Okay. Now I'll reach up here, not so hard. Pull and these back. guys, you know, I mean, and when I was 12 years old, you Stole could buy the these. You could buy these when I was 12 years old in LA for five bucks. Piranhas, really? alligators, and Piranha canines. too? Yeah, they were all legal in Los Angeles and California back when I was a kid. Wow. But this guy gets up to 14 to 16 feet when he's fully grown. They grow a foot a year, up to 1,000 pounds, and live 50 to 70 years. So this is a baby then? Two years old, yes. Two years old. So what are you going to do with him once he starts getting. Well, we're hoping that. Um, we'll have a facility big enough that we can actually have an outside and inside set up for winter and uh, we've been working on that for a while and we uh, we have a location um, now in Magna yeah. so <laughs> we're uh, setting that building up to you know use it as an educational facility 
and um, we're looking at another property that's big enough that we can actually do like a zoo setup out there. Right. Wow. And that's uh, our goal. And okay. Yeah. And it benefits the public because these animals would ordinarily be destroyed in three to five days, and we stopped that all since 1998 till current, and uh, we want to be able to keep doing that. Um, you know, we rely on funding from people's donations and stuff like that because this is all privately ran by me. We don't have any outside state funding right. or anything, cities or counties. So it's 20 a shame years. that these animals would be destroyed just because they were misused or mishandled. Yeah, and they, they don't deserve to die. They're put in a bad situation, just like kind of kids do sometimes. Yeah, you absolutely. put in a bad family or something. Are these two trying to, to get at each other, do you think? No. He's no, just wanting to crawl, yeah. And yeah, we could have a reenactment of a Godzilla movie here. <laughs> <laughs> if, everything went, if everything went just right. <laughs> Magnify it, make him look huge. Yes, exactly. <laughs> if you could zoom in on the camera, we could really... <laughs> yeah. West meets West to see who is better <laughs> in forget. a world. Chaos. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A world it's all going to happen. A world of chaos. Oh, well, yes. In a world of chaos. Get, all your, right. get your money out. Get ready to bet on who's going to be the one. I would go, uh, in this case, I'm going with the alligator. Probably going to come out as a winner, right? Um, yeah, probably. Yeah. In that. But he would lock onto him and not let go, so he'd have a problem there, too. Yeah. Oh, so uh, one of the things that we talked about, you, you, you mentioned, uh, is you know the, the fact that you don't get state in, or city or county funding, which is interesting considering you're the first person they call, yes. <laughs> right? Usually, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is, <laughs> it is an important yes. part of this. And, and Jim also trains a lot of their fire departments as well as police departments on what to do because when they are going on a drug arrest or when they are at a fire response, they often come upon these. Imagine that. Imagine in they a fire, know what to you do. got a snake or something else. Now what do you do? And so that's what you teach them. Right, how to handle them safely and remove them. Or they can call us and we'll come out and do it so there's no chance of anybody getting hurt. Right. And then we do it in Utah. It's all a community service. And then we do it <coughs> out of state and the national level. And that. So we don't just do Utah. Wow. wow. And uh, because you're one of the few handlers around that is uh, able to handle s the, the big, s the scary snakes, yeah. the rattlers, the cobras, things like that, uh, there is some venom here, anti-venom here in Utah. For our local Just, ones, yeah. Yeah, for a and couple of people like you, make sure that we keep you around. Yeah, and also <laughs> it works on like diamondbacks from Nevada and California that uh, Crow Fab, they produce that research park at the UAU. So. Thank but goodness. it's still 100 grand if you get bits right. started. And you have been bit a few times by some stuff, haven't you? Yeah, but nothing venomous. 43 years of handling and, and you know, that's, uh, well, that's at least two or three days a week, yeah. Wow. Uh, lastly, I think we just want to remind people about how serious it is to have something like this. You, you, one, they're illegal, you shouldn't. Uh, but two, when we talk about some of the snakes and things, you mentioned the ooh and ah. I like this. Will you explain what an ooh and ah person is? <laughs> That's my terminology of that. Yeah. Um, well, like I was saying, I was at a club the other day, and a gentleman approached me, and uh, he knew who I was, and he's all like, you got to get me a cobra. you got to get me a cobra. It was about 24-year-old male. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, well, they're illegal, and we don't do stuff like that. We don't bring in illegal animals. We see enough of them as it is. And he goes, well, I want one really bad. And, and he goes, you know, I'm going to get one one way or another. And I said, well, you know, just the way you're acting tells me you'd be dead in 20 or 30 minutes. And so I call people like that ooh and ahs because it's ooh, he, you know, had a um, neat, you know, snake there. And it's ah, it's too bad that he got bit and died. <laughs> and that's basically how it comes <laughs> down ooh to Ooh and ah. Ooh, <laughs> and the last snake. Oh, he's dead. It's yeah, like, it'll last about that long, too, the ooh and ah factor. Yeah, it's, it's like people that can't get their um, self in gear, so we call them neutral spinners. They always, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, but they never can drop that clutch out, you know. I like right. that. that. So like that. neutral spinners. But yeah, something like this is, you know, um, a neat reptile to have, but you would, you know, it's not a Utah thing. I mean, you need yeah. a place like Arizona where you have a pond you can put them in on private property, fenced in and that. Um, you know, I had mine running in my backyard in West Valley before UDOT took the home. We had sunk down pools in the summer. We put them out and stay in the pools with the logs. Right. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's neat. But it's a controlled environment and uh, they can, And you, you know, know how to handle them. I mean, right, and then I know how to safe proof my yard right. from things getting our cages escaping and that. Right. I'll be honest though, I don't know if I'd want to live next door to you. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think you probably the safest you've ever been if you live next door to Jim Dix. That's true. That's what I what think. It's Utah's Reptile Rescue. People can get more information about you, uh, bring you out to school uh, to uh, bring some of these reptiles, yeah. other things, snakes and stuff. How do they get in touch with you? They can uh, call me direct if they want. It's area code 801-860-2497. Or they can go on our website, which is Utah's Reptile Rescue Service dot org our Facebook yeah we do um, educational uh, classes for schools um, we do fairs we do birthday parties uh, family reunions are you know models if models need a snake to you know yeah handle movies, and stuff like that. a lot of movies yeah movie sets some uh, movie actors we call them and that so yeah you know it's a, a neat little thing and the funding we get from that helps us with the animals that we have and their expenses and future ones that come in because it never ends yeah it really Summer's is. coming in, and we'll probably start averaging anywhere from 10 to 15 animals a day yeah. outside of rattlesnake calls. Yeah, and the rattlesnakes last year were a big part of the business. Uh, you, we had a, a huge rattlesnake year last year. Things I just set up for I think we it. will this year, too. Yeah. 72 calls I took in three months. Wow. So just a reminder again that uh, we're entering <laughs> we're entering rattlesnake <laughs> season in not too long uh, from now, and of course uh, as you're out there you need to be careful. But you pulled several of them out of uh, wasn't it a house over in Heber? Wasn't it? Uh, there was a bunch in the, the well there. Is that right? Rattlesnakes? Yeah, it wasn't too far away. Right? Yeah, you don't have them in Park City, and they pick up in like Colville, Colville. and they pick up um, they come up to the Mountain Golf Course right. all the way down to Immigration, <laughs> and even right off the swing. freeway here on 80 coming up there's den sites and that, but. Um, nothing in Park City. Um, I lived here two years and I've never had a call. Um, right. Harmless garter snakes and gophers. But then you pick up at the Jordanelle and they're yeah. there too. So There's a healthy reminder. I've got a very small proof <laughs> right? that I'm going to be traveling in this spring. Well, Jim can always uh, use uh, your help as well in keeping uh, going with the work that he does. And uh, Utah's Reptile Rescue, again, does all of that work, both uh, helping out with the police and fire departments, as well as individuals in their homes with uh, Reptile Rescue. So if you have the opportunity to, one, go visit the website, but two, if you can help out with continuing that service and helping it, uh, we sure appreciate that as well. Jim, thank you so very much for being thank here. Thank you. Jim Dix, Utah's Reptile Rescue. Bring him to your kid's birthday party. He's bound <laughs> to scare someone. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>